Pastor Luis Reyes grew up in a poor family in Chicago. One day at 16, he came home from school to an empty house. His mother and stepfather had abandoned him. For the past 20 years, Louis has tried to bring hope to abandoned and abused kids. In the process, he's become a father figure to thousands. I started reaching 30 children in Waukegan on a Saturday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. In his book, The Spirit and Power of Elijah, Louis says kids need a father's love and offers ideas to help men become better dads. Please welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Program, Luis Reyes, pastor of Church of Joy in Waukegan, Illinois. I'm a Wisconsin girl, so I know where Waukegan, oh, Illinois really? is. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Not a lot of people do. <laughs> Most of the time, I got to tell people I'm from Chicago, yeah. but I'm not. I'm from Waukegan. Waukegan. I, I, I tell people I'm from Green Bay, but I'm not. I'm from De Pere. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I understand. We actually reach children in, in Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Well, the power, uh, the spirit and power of Elijah, yeah. you're your book and that's out about a year now, but with a powerful message mm -hmm. for today yeah. and the days to come. You've been working with children for over 20 years. Yeah. What do you see as the greatest need out there? I think the greatest need is, is it's, it's found in the Word of God. The, God says that there would be a time that we would be living in where the, where the hearts of men would need to be turned back to the, to, to the child. Mm -hmm. And I see the greatest need now being where men need to put a priority again on loving children. You know, so often it's easy to ask a mom to love a child, but, mm -hmm. but a father, it's gonna really take a commitment on his end. And that's what I've been seeing as I've been ministering to men and sharing with them about the book. They've gotta make a commitment. They've gotta take responsibility for this up and coming generation. What does that look like when you talk about being a father to a child? I mean, one of the things you say that I think is significant is, you know, you don't have to be married to the mother of the child. Good Not point. that that wouldn't be your, your first choice right, right, for a child, obviously. of yeah, course. A whole good, family is the point. best scenario. Yeah. But man up and be the dad to the child I, that I agree. you have fathered. Yeah, he needs to be there. Yeah. He, he, he needs to be there. I have found, I mean, I'm able to reach thousands of children because I'm there. I'm available. I'm, I'm, I'm present. And so many kids and, and just want to know that dad is going to be there. If dad makes a promise that I'm going to be picked up by dad, he's going to come and pick me up. He's still going to be available within my life. And that is so important for dads to know that. His presence, his time, his availability. I say this all the time. You don't need to be gifted. You don't need to be a anointed. You just need to be there for your kids. But, you know, I, I think that's a message for parents in general about being there. Yeah. Being there means this. Yeah, time. You know, I'm I'm time. connected to you. I'm listening to what you're saying. Yeah. My, my heart's open to you. I mean, what does fathering look like for these kids? I think, I think it, it, dad gives an identity. You know, when I look at some of the ailments right now in our culture and in our society, dad is so important. When I look at the crime that's taking place in Chicago and outside oh, of oh Chicago. Goodness. Oh, I know. Listen, I see it firsthand. I'm watching it. I've ministered to a lot of the kids. I've even had to bury some of the kids who mm. have seen violence in the streets. But most of the time, they approach the issue. This is a violent issue. This is a, this is a crime issue. This is a gang issue. It's not. It's a fatherless issue. And the fathers have to be involved. So let me give you a quick example here. There was a young man recently who was gunned down in Chicago called Laquan McDonald. Mm -hmm. He got shot 17 times. It made national news. Everybody saw that. Real quick though, I did a background check on the young man. Everybody made a big deal about the police officer who took his life. I said, well, first, let's see who Laquan was. He was a victim before he was ever a victim. Mm. His father left him. His mother was a drug addict. He was sexually abused by his uncle. Oh, and he was in and out of the foster care system. And by the time he was 17, watch, He's now a ward of the state. Why? Because his father was gone. He was abandoned and rejected yeah. by his father. Thus, he surcame to the violence in the street, even by a police officer at that time. And, and he, like so many, is angry. I mean, Very somebody angry. brought me into this Very world angry. and left me hanging left here. Me. But this happened to you. Oh, yeah. How? 
why why are you not Laquan? Well, I think <laughs> I gave my life over to Christ at 12 years old. God intervened in my life. He ministered to me as a young boy. I can remember, Terry, encounters that I would have at a young age, God pressing in on me. I never rejected the Lord. And so when Christ was presented to me at 12 years old, I was very excited, very happy to receive him as my personal Lord and Savior. So I got saved when I was 12. Yeah. And, and recognizing God as your father takes on a whole yeah. new meaning when yeah. your dad's not there. Yeah, yeah. You know? it, it, I want you to talk a little bit about the program that you have in your church. You've taken, you, you have a Sunday, yeah. Sunday yeah. sidewalk. Sidewalk kids, ministry but, to yeah. kids, yeah. Nin, 19 years ago, my wife and I started a ministry, a street ministry to at-risk kids. We called it Sidewalk Sunday School. A very close mentor of mine by the name of Bill Wilson oh, sure. founded, he know, founded the is, Sidewalk Sunday School concept. I took the concept, we made it our own, we put it in the streets. Out of that came thousands of children on a weekly basis we would minister to. Uh, we've got a fleet of vehicles, over 30 buses and vans wow. that we run picking children up. It's a powerful ministry. But I tell people, don't, don't get so caught up in all that we have and all that we do. It's important. The key thing is that I turned my heart to these kids. I wasn't a program director. I became mm -hmm. a spiritual father. The Bible says you have many instructors, but you don't have a lot of fathers. Wow. I became, yeah, I became a spiritual father to these kids. Terry, out of the programming came where I saw these kids starting to graduate high school. They could never go to college. And I said, God, what can I do? He said, why don't you build a school of ministry that they can attend at your church? I built a small Bible college that kids who never could go to college actually come to. I went out and bought homes so they could live in. That's our student housing. We rent different apartments so these young people can live in and we give them opportunity in our ministry or other full-time ministry. Can I just say also, I want you to address this because often we think, well, I can't do that. I don't have, I, I don't have the means to do that. Yeah. You lived in the church basement for oh, yeah. a long time. It's not like you were a person of means. You, With God sometimes when we need him to provide, mm -hmm. you've got to take the first step. Oh yeah, Mark 9, chapter 30, Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 37 says this, if you've reached me, meaning Jesus, the, if you've reached a child, you've reached me, meaning Jesus Christ. Now, this is important because Jesus said, if you reach that little kid, you're actually reaching me. Mm. Jesus provides for his own. He provides for himself. I lived in the basement, but here's the miracle. God brought my wife out of the basement of almost living there for five years. He brought us out. We were blessed with a home that we didn't have to pay for. <laughs> Today, I have an $8 million facility that was bought cash, and my ministry started off reaching kids. Yeah. God will make sure that he will fund the very operation that you do to children. Pastors need to know that. Yeah. Leaders need to know that. He actually the, wants to. Oh, I mean, he doesn't absolutely. want you to do it. He oh, wants no. to do it for you. He, he, he <laughs> wants to, so the miracle could even be talked yes. about. This is what God will do if you reach a generation. All through the Old Testament, Terry, God speaks about he doesn't want a generation to pass without them knowing him. Wow, wow. We have just touch the tip of the iceberg yeah. here in your story, but I want you to know that there's so much more in the spirit and power of Elijah. Really quickly, I just want you to address this. You took in a two-year-old little boy yeah. as a foster child, <laughs> and God taught, you know, first of all, let's just say yeah. foster children are so in need of not just families, but dads. Yeah. What did God show you through that little boy? Well, his name, his name is Trey. He's still with our ministry, and he's going to watch this broadcast. Okay, Trey. <laughs> and he's two year, he was two years old. He, he needed a father. Yeah. His father was in prison. Mm. His mother was struggling to raise him, and uh, she couldn't do it. So my wife and I said, we'll take him. So we took Trey from the age of two until about five or six years old to allow his mom to get stable. And God showed me how to love him. Mm -hmm. God showed me how important my role would be in his life at that time and even today. I'm excited to let you know that he's still part of our ministry and I get to impart into Trey's life and give him an identity that God's intended. And who knows how God's going to use Trey in I this know. new generation of yeah. young people coming up. You know, uh, the scripture is so strong about what's going to happen in the end days, the hearts of the fathers yeah. turn toward the The church the needs to be ready yes, for this. Yes, They need to be ready to respond, Terry, mm -hmm. to this young and up and coming generation. God wants them reached and he has provided a way of doing that where men need to turn their hearts 
back toward children. It's all right here. Luis's book is called The Spirit and Power of Elijah. To order a copy, you can go to LuisReyesMinistries.com. It's a powerful message, and we hope you'll get a hold of the book. Thank you. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. We're going to be back with more 700 Club Interactive right after this. Stay with us. Thank you. Awesome.